We felt there was a problem in the, the term that was used by the Aztecs for themselves. And the term was this. Mexica. The X at the time of the conquest of Mexico, the X in Spanish made a Ch sound, which is an Arabic sound or a Hebrew sound. What, it's also a German sound, actually. It's the sound, it's a CH in German, like as in the word Buch. Um, anyway, uh, that Ch sound, it was decided by later generations of Spaniards, made Spanish sound too Arabic. And so, as part of their de-Arabization, they actually switched it to a ha and got rid of the ha. And that's why we say Mexico today. But the Aztecs call themselves Mexica. So it's kind of a little hard to say Mexica. Um, the Mexica were a Nahuatl speaking people. And the Nahuatl speaking people populated the Valley of Mexico. So, here is Mexico. The Valley of Mexico is fairly well centered, it's kind of towards the south. My Mexico is pretty bad, I guess. It feels really skinny. She's been on the diet or something. <laughs> uh, anyway. The Valley of Mexico is actually a rather big chunk of land, pretty much in the center south part of Mexico. Um, this is the is Isthmus of Tehuantepec. The Isthmus of Tehuantepec was the effective boundary between the Maya and the Aztecs. It was sort of a narrow piece of land, so geographically it made it so that they could sort of bottleneck. Um, the Maya were completely, in many ways, completely different from the Aztecs, but in many ways they were actually somewhat similar. The reason that they, I forgot to explain this, the reason why this anthropologist decided to rename the Mexica and made them Aztecs was because when he talked about contemporary Mexicans, right, meant you were just, you would do it the same way to make it multiple, and then when you're reading the text, you couldn't tell what they meant. The, are the pre-Columbian Mexicans, or the Mexica, or if you meant contemporary Mexicans. And then what he did was he went to Aztlan, which was the mythical place of origin for the Mexica, and he just made them Aztecs. Um, it's used so much now that I mean, there's no reason to stop using it, but it, I, I still want to say Mexica, so I will probably use the word change of the Valley of Mexico is bizarre, unique. One thing, it's very high in elevation. The bottom, I think, is at 7,000 feet in elevation. So, so the Valley of Mexico is higher than Denver. In the middle of the Valley of Mexico, in the middle of the Valley of Mexico was a really big, salt water lake. Uh, it tended to be a pressure at this end and saltier at this end. The water that went in usually came off of runoff from the mountains. This is all the mountains around it. The mountains would get snow in the winter, occasional rainfall, and then the runoff would dump into it. There, also, there was also a spring outlet uh, in the northern part of the valley that also put water directly into the lake. But there's no outlet for the lake and so the lake stayed salt, became salty over the centuries that existed and only existed. What happened was this. The Aztecs, according to their own origin myth, came from Aslan, went down the eastern side of the valley, and were bounced from group to group, from place to place. They, everywhere they went, they weren't accepted. Until finally they ended up on this peninsula here. I'm trying to remember the name of the group that was living there. Like, and for some reason, a make a make is stuck in my head, but I know it's not a make Anyway, they ended up on this peninsula here, 
And the, the king of the area said, you know what, you can settle in this one part of this peninsula that's really kind of nasty land. We're not using it. It's the best we can do. So the Aztecs settled there. According to the origin myth, and I'm saying myth because we really can't confirm the story because there's no, there's no corroboration. But it's kind of a neat story because it kind of tells you a little bit about the Mexique. It's a Mexique myth. According to the origin myth, what they then did was a group of their priests invited after years of being in this marginal land and barely eking out of existence. A, a, the priest invited the king's daughter to a special ceremony. The king thought, okay, I'd love for you guys to honor my daughter, that'd be great. And he sent the princess to go uh, be prepared for the ceremony. He didn't know what was involved in the preparation. What the, what the priest did was uh, they pinned the daughter down and they made an incision right here and then they went around her neck, all the way around, and then they grabbed her skin and they peeled it off while she was alive. And then one of the priests got in it. And when the ceremony started, what the king saw, because he was invited to witness the ceremony, was a priest dancing in his daughter's skin. And the king, of course, orders the mass execution of the Aztecs, orders the annihilation. Well, when the army arrives to wipe out the Aztecs, the Aztecs run to the lake shore, because there's nowhere to go on the peninsula to the lake shore, the civilians. And what do they run to? Boats. The priests had already got in a bunch of boats and prepared them and stuck them on the shore, knowing that this was going to be the king's reaction. The people got on the boats and they went out to an island. And on the island, they found a cactus. And on the cactus, they found an eagle, an ink eagle, its talons, and beak. It was eating a louse. And according to the priests, that's where the god Huitzilopochtli told them to go settle. And that's all the Mexican find. And so they settled there. The first ruler of the Aztecs, the Garabano Tenoch. They named the place Tenoch Titlán. Tenoch is city. The Aztecs built a city of stone. The city was built on a grid with blocks. Like a, like a contemporary city in the United States. Right? However, the blocks were actually one building with courtyards in the middle. And what these buildings were is they were apartments called cow coolies. 